So in this video I'm going to be doing a quick demonstration to show you um, how you can use toothpaste to aid your recovery of a badly scratched optical disc. So as you can see from this photo, the disc is very highly scratched. Um, you can't see the whole surface because of the angle of the light, but it kind of looks as bad as that all over the disc, which is because this is an old disc that I deliberately scratched with some sandpaper so I can illustrate um, the gains that can be had. Um, using toothpaste, when I first tried this, I was kind of like, there's no way this is going to work, but um, it actually did, which is because it grinds away the surface layer of plastic on the disc, and make, essentially it makes, this, makes the scratches slightly less deep, so that the laser has a better chance of reading the data from the area. So you can kind of target areas if you need to, or if the whole disc is bad like this, you can just do the whole thing. Um, so, so, just before we get started, I have a few warnings to give you. Um, and these are also in the blog post, which you'll find in the video description. Um, I'd probably recommend you read the blog post as well as this video, as well as watching this video, if you want to perform this, because there's a bit more information in that. Um, but essentially, here are the warnings. There's no guarantee that this will help in your case, so if your disc is really, really badly scratched, like the one that I have with the sandpaper, it might not work. Um, if you have only a few bad scratches, it's more likely to work. Or if you have a scratch that goes from the centre of the disc to the outside, because of the way the discs are written, you're much more likely to be able to read the data there than if you have a disc that kind of follows, than if you have a scratch that kind of follows the curvature of the disc. Because that means there are many um, bits of data or sectors on the disc that are probably damaged or unreadable in um, one go. So it's much harder for the drive to cope with that. Um, other thing, if you overdo it and you wear down the plastic too much, you might expose the metal underneath, which could permanently mean you lose your data. Not likely to happen, but there you go. Um, do not put wet discs into your optical drive, which I guess is a fairly obvious one, but you need to make sure your disc is dry and clean before you put it in your optical drive because otherwise you might permanently damage your drive. Do not scrub the label side of the disc, particularly on CDs, because th that side is very vulnerable and the metal layer where the data is stored is just on the other side of the label on CDs. So if you scratch the label side, you are probably, unless you're very lucky, scratching the metal layer off the disc, which will mean that part of the data that was there is unrecoverable because it's physically destroyed. Um, the final warning is I don't accept any responsibility for you losing your data or damaging your disk drive um, from following these steps. Now personally with a different disk I did have good results with this and I was able to slowly pull the data off. Um, but I'm not going to guarantee that it will work and I'm not going to accept responsibility for damaging your equipment or losing your data. So please follow this tutorial at your own risk. I'm going to first demonstrate just how bad it is. So I'm just going to stick it in my drive and um, see what noises it makes. Well, that's encouraging. Okay, it managed to recognise there's a disc. But I don't think it's going to be able to um, mount it, if memory serves. We can open up a terminal and run dmessage, see what's going on. Yeah, so it is getting read errors. And we can now hear weird clunking sounds coming from the drive, as you might expect. So, I'm going to run my quick um, setting the drive speed down command, which sometimes helps. Um, and because the drive's busy, it'll take a while for this to go through. Okay. Let's see whether that makes any difference at all. Because really, we just need to wait for it to settle down. Um, just a little bit. So we can open the um, 
GUI without it kind of chugging for ages waiting for this drive. Just going to pause the screen cap here and I'll come back when it's settled. Just briefly resuming here, uh, just in case you hear something interesting. Oh, it looks like it's settled now. No, it hasn't. Okay, um, but the driver's just been spinning up and spinning down and making lots of weird whirring and clunking and kind of strange motor noises. I think it might have finally given up. Sounds like it. Right, so we've already set the disk speed to 1, which is a trick I showed you in an earlier video. Um, so I'm just going to open my GUI. Bring it onto the screen. Oh, it did mount the medium in the end. Okay, that's interesting. So, just going to enter my password quickly. Right. So, there's activity on the disk again, which is not a great sign because that might mean it's. Oh, okay. That was actually not terrible. Sometimes it will hang for ages. Um, in which case, you might be worth opening the GUI first, then waiting for it to collect information, then putting the disk in, and then just, like, specifying the path manually. Um, let's just see what it's found. Uh, CD-ROM, here we go. Doesn't know the size, but this disk is still doing some slightly weird things. Okay, so I'm just going to pick that, and I'm going to give it a map file. It's just going to go on my desktop as cd.log and destination is just going to go on my desktop as well. Keep it nice and simple. Um, it's just going to be cd.image and settings. We are just, because you've, you've heard how bad it is, we're just going to go for very conservative direct access and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it and then I'm going to leave it for half an hour and give you a, um, a montage of it probably failing to read anything much. Then I'm going to do the toothpaste and then I'm going to pop it back in and show you the result. How much it's improved will be interesting because the results are going to vary with this, um, but we shall see. So, the drive spun up, started making some slightly disconcerting sounds. Okay, we've read a little bit of data. That's nice. I mean, we know at least some of it is readable, seeing as it managed to mount the um, mount the disk. So I will wait half an hour or so, and then come back. Okay, so as you can see, it's been 40 minutes actually, and um, the driver's still clunking away, which you can probably hear, but um, we've made very little progress. It's like made several passes and found data that's non trimmed, about 12 megs, but um, yeah, not much progress. If I left it for way longer, it might eventually recover some more, but you can see it's only recovered about up one and a half megs. So, now we'll try the toothpaste thing. I'm just going to abort it and enter my password quickly. Right. So that's not going to be mountable, probably. I'm not even going to try, because you can see how little it's recovered. Um, so, actually, I'm just going to reset. Right, so now I'm going to take the disc out and rub some toothpaste on in the problematic areas and kind of rub it relatively hard. Like, you don't want to rub it too hard because you don't want to crack the disc or anything like that. 
but I think the idea is, you know, do it slowly, maybe like a few times, so you can see whether it's working or not, rather than going like really gung ho from the start. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so I'm back after about 10 15 minutes. So I just got some toothpaste, literally rubbed it in circles along the outside of the disc. Um, paid particular attention to the problematic areas and just kind of scrubbed it in circles. Um, and then I found it started to dry out, so I ended up wetting it and a little bit every now and then to stop it. Um, so just rubbing it for 10 minutes. Uh, as you can see from the photo, it still doesn't look very good. Um, and I could actually feel the scratches on the surface of the disc, so obviously these are quite deep. Um, so I'm not expecting miracles, but I'm thinking maybe it will be able to read a little bit more very slowly. Um, but we shall see. So I'm going to put it into the drive now. Please note, make sure your disc is super dry before you do this, because if you get the inside of your drive wet, you might break it. Um, so I just washed the drive with water and then a little bit of soap to try and take fingerprints off and stuff like that, and then let it air dry. Um, involving waving it around a lot, which looked silly, but um, worked really well. So, disc is in. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, that's promising. I'm not, not expecting it to do this very easily. Still being a bit strange. It slowed down again. Which is not amazing, but um, we'll see what happens. I'm just going to run my command again to slow it down, and just in case that helps. See what happens. Actually, let's run the message again. In this case, it might not be any better because the disk is in such a state, but often you'll have one or two really bad scratches. It's more common. Oh, here we go. That was quicker. That was much quicker. So, actually, we, we might have some luck here. It might just be luck of the draw, like it might just be quicker out of chance, but we'll see. So I'm just going to give it the same map file and disk image. And yes, it can write there, best recovery again, all the same settings. Let's hit start and see what happens. I'm not going to expect miracles by any stretch. Let's see whether it does anything. It's not looking great in the first instance. I'll do the same thing as I did last time. I'm just going to let it run for around half an hour or so, and we'll see whether it picks up any more data or whether the current read rate picks up. Because we're kind of at the start of the disk again, so with some luck we might be able to read some of this stuff. We're like not at a completely different part of the disk to before. So let's see. So, as you can see, this unfortunately has not um, helped us too much, but considering the state of the disk I'm not honestly particularly surprised. So, with some luck, at this point you'll now be slowly reading data, which is what happened when I did it. 
I think I could just slowly read data at like 700 kilobytes per second or something, and bits where it was like 100, but that was good enough. Um, if your situation is more similar to mine, then at this point you might want to try a different CD drive if you have one, um, or optical drive. This will work with DVDs and Blu-rays theoretically as well. I'm just using a CD for this one. Um, so sometimes newer drives are better at reading scratch disks than older ones, um, owing to the technology having improved. Um, but otherwise you can try wax. It's supposed to work because it kind of fills in the um, fills in the gaps in the cracks and kind of makes it slightly more even so the laser's not deflected as much. Or you could go back to the toothpaste and kind of scrub it some more and you might have to repeat that several times to wear the plastic down enough for the drive to be able to read it. Um, there is a problem there where if you wear it down too much uh, you might not be able to recover data at all if you wear it down to the metal layer. It's probably not particularly likely that you'd do that but you might just have to spend quite a long time wearing it down to get to that stage. Um, so, unfortunately in this case it hasn't really worked and I've run out of time to, um, to uh, keep going with this process. But if there's demand I'll have another shot at it. Um, I'll try it with a different disc. Um, I hope this has been useful to you anyway. Um, like and subscribe if you like this tutorial. Um, and leave a comment if you want me to try it again, or if you have any other ideas as to things I could do relating to this. If you want me to try wax, for example, I could do that. Um, but that's it for all now. Stay tuned and stay safe, everyone.